Hello, and thank you for joining another episode of the Ketoning Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. And you ever notice that I kind of sing your name? Well, it's because he's the, the guy off, uh, was it Love Boat? Was, who's John Davidson? Oh, I don't Square. know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he's like a singer. John oh. Davidson's a singer. Well, that would not be why I do it, because I did not know that. Mm-hmm. You're the only John Davidson I know, but... As I go back and listen to these while I'm editing them, every single time, I kind of sing that. <laughs> okay, so John Davidson I was born in 1941. He is a American actor, singer, and game show host. He did That's Incredible, Time Machine, Hollywood Squares, and the $100,000. Oh, I re- he did the back in one and one, wasn't he? Why did why I thought the love boat? I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was that show? I don't know. Love connect. Well, yeah, love connection. I don't did know. Did he do that? I got no idea. I think he might have. But oh no! Here down down. If I scroll down his career, the love boat. He is the love boat in Fantasy Island. So this is completely not related to reality. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right. Huh. So uh, if you follow along, if you follow along live, you got to hear us two weeks ago when we recorded. But if yeah. you were following via podcast, we had uh, technical difficulties and no backup. Yes, that would. I, I'll check. I, I'll take that one. Uh, my computer was not recording and John was not on site. So this is true. And and honestly, it's probably in the best interest to everybody because I was driving. And uh, so there was lots of noise. So it was we, a little rough. But. It, was, it was definitely not our, our best work. But, hey, we held the live one, so we should get, we get partial credit. We did. So. so our live was actually talking about dog food. And just before we get into that, I was not correct that John Davidson did not do Love Connection. That was Chuck Woolery. So. Oh, <laughs> good thing we got that. Sure there's somebody <laughs> on the other end in their car. Well, I mean, they might be because I would be. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so last week we did, um, we actually talked about dog food. So I feed my dogs, um, I do not feed them kibble. So we feed them a variety of different things and I apologize that, that you can't hear that. Yeah. But oh, well. I do chicken, turkey, sometimes beef, throw in some vegetables. Um, and I actually got the recipe from a veterinarian veterinarian online, and I can link that into these show notes in case anybody is interested um, in either checking that veterinarian out or um, switching their their dogs over to. And um, I did put some some raw meat in the last ones I ground up. Did you? So, yeah. Now, do you do do you give them um, any organ meat at all? Yeah. Okay. Liver. Okay. Cows, cow liver. Yeah. I think you said chicken. Uh, no, I do cow. Yeah, I do. I do cow organs. I don't do chicken organs at all. Um, and I used to do pig because, for those of you who listen to us, I buy half a half a hog every year. Um, but my female does not like the organs from the pork, so I have a hard time getting her to eat her food when we add that in. So I have stopped doing that. I only do. I have been. Speaking of the cow and the pig, I've been tearing it up with the salsa, salsa, whatever the heck it's called, the immersion, not immersion blender, the one that you do the steak in the water bath. Oh, the sous vide. Sous vide. Oh, man. Yeah. Whew. That is dangerous. Yeah, I, I was going steak. to do mine the other day, oh, but I just was lazy that day. And I did 24, no, I did 36-hour ribs in it. Oh, oh. Yeah, cow. Mm, I have Man. not thought because I would smoke all of my ribs. I forgot that you could do it in. So TV. yes, we it has taken a little away from our smoker, but yeah, definitely the steaks, perfect medium every time, and just pull them out of those. Yeah. Pan sear them. Man. Yeah, I did do steaks them, and I really did like them. It still bothers me that. That they're being cooked in plastic, but I guess it doesn't it doesn't get hot enough. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That but may be something that we should check into. Anyhow, uh, we uh, we digress all over the place. So so the last show in the feed, 
or I guess two shows ago in the feed, would be the Keto Carnivore. Yes. And we went through uh, stuff like that. And if you stayed on till the very end, we all verbally called each other out on trying it. Or yes. maybe I should say Melissa called us out or we called ourselves out. Whatever. Bottom line is, I, of course, did my standard, not think about it until you texted me, I think, the, on the 1st. Uh, no, I I texted you the day before we were supposed to start. <laughs> and reminded me, she says, "Are you going to do it?" Yeah, and so said, so it was a, it was a thirty day challenge starting October first is what we had talked about. And so I texted him the day before and said, "Hey, <laughs> don't forget, tomorrow starts carnivore." And I I'll go ahead and just flat out say I did not make it. So how many days did you make it? Did you start the first day? I did start the first day. Okay. And I would say day one was easy. It was no big deal whatsoever. Day two became hard. And uh, are we going are we, are we to dive in? Yeah, go ahead. What, what, was, what did you find difficult about it? Uh, for me, it was um, I started to crave vegetables. Okay. So it wasn't a routine thing. It was more you physically were craving to eat. Well, so to be fair, um, you know, there's like certain things that I that are staples that I do, right? Mm-hmm. And using lettuce as a bun is one of them. And it wasn't the first time wasn't a big deal. I did. Uh, I just, you know, no, no, no lettuce instead. Because you actually were out. Um, during work one day, yeah. and you had to stop and get a burger. Yeah, so you know it's always the emergency problem, right? You know, so I did not have lunch because I was running errands and stuff for my real estate stuff. So I I had to stop somewhere for lunch, and I hadn't had breakfast yet, and I didn't want to wait and not eat because I just didn't want to because I was actually kind of hungry. So I just got a, a burger without a bun or anything. And uh, had to get no lettuce and no anything, which is still, I, I'm going to say that wasn't a big deal, but my stool started to get soft. That bothered me. Really? Yes. Yes. Okay, so worse. just so that everyone hears that when he says my stool, I'm talking he means about my poo. poo. My poo. So for I those. I never, never had a keto problem with. Well, for those people who believe that vegetables are required so that you can have a bowel movement or that you stay regular, whatever, John is now saying that he did not have issue pre, Mm -mm. but when he eliminated, and how long did it take after you eliminated vegetables? It was like, so it it wasn't like all of a sudden, too, it was gradual. Like, try to think back about this, because I do poor documenting. But I would say day two wasn't bad, but day three I noticed it, and then day four it was worse. And I, I mean, I don't have the you know Bristol school stool scale in front of me, but it was a, it, but it was changing consistently. It was, it was changing, and it was not like for me. I I've never had that problem ever. Yeah, that's so, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about before I quit, but I was. But, <laughs> But so here's the teaser. John quit. <laughs> I did quit. Uh, so day seven, I think. Day seven, we we found out that all of our cool crop for lettuce came in in our garden. Okay. So we had fresh lettuce, and we had like all all this stuff, and I and I was wanting a bit, you know, basically a salad. And I just decided, eh, I'm going to have a salad. And it was like the next day. It was back to normal. Yeah. That was fun. So that, that tells me two things. One, you do not need vegetables to stay regular. And two, the theory that it is a bulking is actually true. Because if it went from being more solid to less solid when you eliminated, and then as soon as you brought them in, it's bulking it up, and that's about it. Which is possible. I, I actually, I wanted, that's why I wanted to talk to you, is to see if there was something I could take or, or something I should be doing differently. And uh, you were traveling, 
And I decided not to have that conversation over text message. <laughs> so my stool is soft now. Softer. Well, so here's here's my take on that. And no, ch- I mean, and I actually, and I cut out supplements too, which is weird for me. Like I don't really take a lot of stuff, but the uh, but uh, that like the magnesium and the mineral stuff. Oh, and that uh, is very interesting. I put, I always put in my water stuff. Oh, so like the fasting drops. Yeah, like the fasting drops. I cut those out, too. I cut everything out. Okay, so you were way more strict than me. But here's my take on that. I think it would have probably leveled out. Oh. It probably wouldn't have continued to get worse and stay bad. Um, and most generally, when you have a drastic food right. change, then you're going to have changes in the bathroom. But, man, it was. I, I, I said this off the air, so I'll say it here. Fasting for five days was easier than avoiding vegetables for me, and I don't know if that's because it's been built into my life for my entire life. I've just always had vegetables, and like we had a few times at dinner where green beans, man. I was just like looking at those green beans, and you know I normally like you know put butter on them and garlic, and man, I was looking at those green beans, thinking, man, I really want those green beans. No, I said I would do this, but I yeah, I finally gave up. I just it was too mentally. So yeah, it was easier for me to fast than it was for me to go. That on is interesting. Night. I think we need to do this challenge again. I think I'll prepare differently. Uh, yeah. I had mentally thought that the garden was gone, and there's just something about the garden for us. It's kind of that would be more along the lines of like maybe my version of. Uh, you know, the family things that you do. So, like, you know, picking the, you know, small tomatoes with my kids and all yeah. that stuff. And, and so, yeah, like, the day I, I ate a salad, I went to the garden and picked picked a, some, some cherry tomatoes off the vine and ate them <laughs> also. <laughs> well, so I did something very similar. Um because I have not di- disclosed this to too many people, I'm not going to really say it here, although I will tell on this podcast later. But I am having a surgical procedure at the end of the year, and most of my family do not know that. That's why I do not want to, because I don't know if they listen to this. But because of that, I am taking things in preparation. And so I thought about going carnivore would be okay, but then once I started thinking about it, some of those supplements that I am taking in preparation, I didn't feel was carnivore. Um, So one of the things that I've been doing for several months um, is doing collagen, which although it says it's unflavored, that does not mean it's flavorless. So in my coffee, which we had agreed that we were going to do coffee um, in the mornings, but in my coffee, I put the collagen, and it was very foul-tasting. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I did it the first day, and I was like, I'm just oh. going to give it up have because you, it was disgusting. Have you ever dumped that stuff in water? I have not, oh. but I couldn't even imagine if oh. it tasted that bad in okay. my coffee. Yeah, I was traveling, and I dumped one of those packets, one of those individual packets. Did you have flavored one, though? It was unflavored. Oh, it was unflavored. Okay. It was unflavored, but it turned into, like... Gelatin? Yes. Yeah. Like, not cake batter, but, I mean, there's chunks in it, and I, no matter how much I shook it up, it... Yeah. And it does have a taste. So the it. taste was very foul. So I had decided that I was going to stick to... But collagen still counts as a... Well, it does, but we were we were leaving out the sweetener, right? Yeah. And I could not do the collagen in my coffee without the sweetener to cover that taste. Uh-huh. So day two, I cut out coffee. Well... You know, that wasn't going to work for me. And then I started thinking about I really needed that collagen, and I wasn't willing to forego 30 days of it just because, you know, surgery is so close. So I decided that I was going to go back to the coffee with a little bit of sweetener to cover up the taste, and I was going to do that, and that was all I was going to do, which I stuck pretty good. Um, So you mentioned last week I was traveling. I was staying with my sister in Arizona, and they wanted me to make a pizza. So I made a pizza, 
not even thinking about it, it's almond flour. So that was the first time um, I had had non-carnivore stuff. After dinner, I thought about it, and I was like, oh, man, I shouldn't have eaten that just because. But whatever. By the time I got home, uh, which was last Saturday, I had a ton of uh, tomatoes, which I thought the garden was a done deal as well. Mm -hmm. So I had a ton of tomatoes that had come ripe. Or, Well, my husband had taken green ones off, and they were turning ripe in the windowsill. So um, he wanted tacos, cut up fresh tomatoes. So long story short, I as well um, wow. chucked the, the challenge. Um, how, so how long did you end up making it? Longer than me, it sounds. Yeah, yeah, so we started the first, and that would have been, let me look at the calendar. Um, I made it probably a week and a half. Hmm. Yeah, so pr- not not many more days than you, because it's only the 17th today. Um, but yeah, it, I think I think to do it, and, and to be quite honest, at this point, I think the challenge for both of us is more to get over that mental thing. Yeah than it is for the food. Because I think that the carnivore thing, I could completely do just carnivore without any problem. Mine is the mental thing, and it's the extra stuff. It's not vegetables for me. It's the other stuff. It's the sweetener. Um, and, you know, like I said, the the little bit of almond flour and stuff that you don't really think about, those added ingredients. Um, but for you, I almost think that it is a mental, um, I, it's almost like the, the high protein thing. I mean, in the beginning, when you and I first started this, like you, you had the mindset that high protein was what you had to do because you worked out and did all of that. And I feel like this vegetable thing is almost that same block for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I knew it was going to be too, but yeah, but yeah, who knew? But yeah, I don't know. I think I'd be willing to try it again. Definitely need to be in the winter like it is now, because had we waited two more weeks, I think I wouldn't have had the temptation of fresh vegetables just getting cut. Right. I mean, like we did. We still have fresh beans in the refrigerator from the, the last time we pulled them off. Yeah, maybe we should do like February. A, it's a shorter month, and all of my stuff will be done. And hmm. yeah, all right. Rain check on the keto carnivore. Uh, the the being able to do eggs, I think, helped. I know some people. Yeah. Are sure, but I made a I made some pretty good batches of scrambled eggs, and any time where I would have normally thrown some extra green beans or whatever in there. I uh, threw in some uh, scrambled eggs instead. Yeah. So just just to kind of tell everybody, John and I had already decided that the carnivore for us was going to be meat, cheese, and eggs. Um, if it was produced by an animal, we were considering that carnivore. We talked about, and some people don't, but... We talked about that in the Q&A? I think so, Yeah. Um, but I mean, again, if you go to some of these carnivore sites, they're going to tell you that it's meat only and, um, but for us, we were doing more of a keto carnivore versus strict straight carnivore. I still think it's a challenge to get your fat intake up to feel satiated without getting a ton of protein. I mean, I had to, I had to really think through the types of meat. Yeah. Yeah, I, that definitely, even for me, is a challenge because I tend to do things like mayonnaise, which, although mayonnaise is a great fat and there's nothing bad in it, you have avocado oil, which technically is not carnivore. Yeah, um, that's the way I think it's... Yeah. Might as well, well allow some of those things. Yeah, which, I mean, for me, I probably would allow that, and I know that... You know, that's not straight corn carnivore, even keto carnivore. But for me, the quantity that you're getting in the avocado oil, if you make your own mayonnaise, I mean, that's pretty minimal. Yeah. So, and the only real other ingredient is egg. So, I mean. Yeah, I didn't uh, have any MTC oil either during that time frame. 
And uh, I, I actually wonder if I've added it back. I may have had it today because sometimes I put an extra teaspoon of it on top of my food if I feel like I'm a little mm. extra hungry. Yeah. So, and it, I mean, again, like I can't say that I have incorporated vegetables because I've never really liked vegetables anyway. But like today, for instance, I did um, boneless ribs in the crock pot or the Instapot, and I did a barbecue sauce on it. Well, I mean, that's technically not because it's tomato paste and, you know, whatever. Oh, but and we had uh, eggplants last night, chicken, and uh, pesto sauce. The Ooh. pesto sauce wouldn't count. Right. Because but that sounds yummy. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. My mom made it. Um, she... She had we had homemade pesto sauce because we have that in the garden, and my my wife is on the low lectin diet, so uh, she uses uh, a different kind of nuts than the pine nuts that are normally in it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, long story short, and then you add cr- heavy cream to that. Oh man. Mm. Yeah. See, now I did I did do cream as well because that comes from yeah, but an animal, but the pesto wouldn't count. Yeah. I have made pesto, though, speaking of that. I made pesto with spinach and pistachio nuts. Yeah? And it was really... Pistachio sounds something interesting. Yeah, it was really yummy. Yeah, we so I don't know if she walnut. can eat that. We went through the nut list and, uh, and landed on walnuts. It gives it a little bit more of a woody taste. Yeah, see, this one didn't. Right. Because pistachios wouldn't. Yeah. You have to see, I don't know what the lectin is in pistachios, though, but you'll have to tell her about because it was really, I mean, my husband is really picky with that kind of stuff, and he loved it. We had it um, I have a pistachio, couple of I have a days. personal pistachio rule that all pistachios I buy have to be in the shell because it slows me down. Otherwise, yeah. man, I could eat just handfuls of pistachios like they're going out of style. Oh, I could definitely see that. Oh, man. Definitely. Pistachio. It's probably the one good thing about having these braces on is um, because I cannot chew pistachios. Uh, My teeth hurt so bad all the time yeah. that I cannot. They're too hard. Oh. Yeah. I bought some for my trip, and I ate a couple of them, and my teeth hurt so bad. I brought the whole bag home and gave them to my husband. <laughs> you know, the other thing I did the day after I went off of the Keto Carnival is ate a Keto Brick. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't have a keto brick either. Yeah, that's hilarious. All right. So, uh, all right. So that's a little bit of a recap on our failed experiments and our own personal, our own personal intake on our probably way we uh, I guess failed on it. But uh, what else has been going on? You've got some, uh, you've got some uh, pretty important news, don't you? Yeah. So we announced. Gosh, I don't know a month or two ago, that we um, are venturing out to do JoJo's Kitchen. And um, so just to kind of recap on what that is, we are doing dry mix. Uh, It will be um, bread and cake. Currently, we have two flavors. Uh, We have a pumpkin spice bread and we have a chocolate cake mix. And... um, so we thought we were going to have this launched long before now, ran into some uh, obstacles in trying to get certified from our lovely state we live in. So I am taking a class the first of next month to get certified. We found a kitchen that will let us rent the space um, in order to do that. So we're hoping to get this kicked off uh, next month and we actually just launched a what is a Kickstarter is what it's called. So we'll be publishing that um, for everybody to be able to get their orders in early, and that will help us determine um, what kind of scale we need to look at when we first uh, kick this out, kick this off, and open up sales. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well, and hopefully uh, you're listening to this before it ends. And if you guys want in on that, that would be that yeah, would be wonderful. It's been quite the experience. Um, I think you take a lot of things for granted, and it just sounds so easy to start something like this. And 
we talked about some of the headaches early on, but uh, it's it's of course everything costs more. Everything you thought we we actually went the one of the first people we had a meeting with. Uh, it was going to be almost ten thousand dollars. Yeah, what they wanted to do with the first run. Which, yeah. So then we I guess followed more of the uh, I don't know Keo Savage model bootstrap it, try to do some things ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and we had talked to several people um, who have started up their own businesses and we tried to take advice from them. Some of their takeaways, you know, they wish they would have known this or that or done things different in the beginning. Um, but to be honest, it was just more money than what either of us were willing to. Uh, yeah. And bottom line is keto is being so popular now. Um, I know we didn't brand brand that keto, but there's a strong possibility that there'll be, you know, much more of a competing products out by the time. And so we don't really know where it'll go, uh, but we at least owed it to ourselves. We'd spend enough time talking about it. And, uh, yeah. And if the Kickstarter fails and nobody wants it, and we'll, we learn something, uh, it's, at least we we gave it a give it a try because uh, it's definitely something that we we would have liked to have had. And again, the only options out there right now are loaded with junk. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, to your point, the uh, competitors, there are a couple of them that I have seen, um, but every one of them has got tapioca starch in it. And what John and I decided from the very beginning, no matter what we produced, um, we were not going to compromise on ingredients because we wouldn't eat those things ourselves. So we wanted to produce something that both of us would not only consume ourselves, but we would also feed to our families. And um, so we may not be able to compete with them. Uh, they have been able to produce them for a, a, cheap, a cheaper cost. Uh, but again, it's because the ingredients are different. And so... Hopefully, uh, we can find enough people that will follow us and um, buy the product and love it. We had great feedback when we sent out for testers. So, Yeah, and the other thing that is really, I wouldn't say put a damper on it, but uh, we had planned on launching this with our Central Illinois, and I don't know, you want to talk about that? We've posted the... Lots going on on that side too, and we're just not there. The speaker lineup and everything just couldn't get all together. So, the Central Illinois, I mean, are we are we talking about branding yet? Yeah. So initially, yeah, initially it was uh, going to be a mini fest. Um, yeah, all the two keto dudes. We got the playbook. Uh, we had strong sponsorship in the beginning, but due to People's circumstances and everything. Uh, we 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 lost some traction, and I wouldn't say we lost sponsorship because the sponsorship's still there. Uh, because I think it's pretty cool. The the two keto dudes actually are not charging a franchising fee if you're not charging. But when it got down to the details, I mean, you were way into it. I, I haven't even helped yet, basically. But uh, lots of lots of questions. Revolving around some yeah, of the so, menus wanting insurance and yep. how do you do that when you're not charging and you know trying to get people to sponsor then and uh, there's just so many hoops to jump through and stars to align. Yeah, and and to be quite honest, um, the those of us who were initially part of it, I, I and I quite honestly I'll speak for myself because I have not participated in that side of things. Um, I volunteered every year at KetoCon, and so I, I had some knowledge of um, how to do some of that stuff. But to find the venue and to go through all of the back end of it, I have never participated. So there was a lot of things um, that I didn't think about and didn't know that we needed to do. So when, I don't know, I, it was like 30 days before, um, there were some unforeseen circumstances that uh, there was a couple of the organizers that were unable to assist. And so I and another organizer got really 
started delving into this and figured out that there was just too much work to be done in 30 days because the plan was to have this on November the 3rd. So what we actually have decided is that we're going to push it out to January. Um, so there should be another meetup um, event coming out very soon. And, um, you know, and, and luckily the other organizer knows people who have actually been part of a production like this. So he has reached out to get some assistance. And so um, we've got a few things covered that, you know, even after we started looking into it, there were even more things that we didn't know and didn't think about. So um, it's nice to, to have extra help and uh, people who know the things that were, you know, need to be done to do that. But we do have some, some things in the works, so we're hoping to be able to, to announce the venue and the date very soon. So, so if I wanted to follow Central Illinois Keto Group, where would I go? Um, I would say for right now, uh, go to the Facebook page, and I will uh, link that in the show notes as well. Um, and we should be announcing there. We will do a, an event on Meetup eventually when we actually have everything squared away. And then people can participate in that, but we'll announce it on the Central Illinois uh, Low Carb Facebook page and uh, put the link in for Meetup in that as well. You can also uh, go to Ketonian Corner Facebook page, Instagram, email, um, or our website, and um, we'll keep things posted there as we know them as well. So. All right. Well, lots of random updates today. So what, 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 do, you, what do you call this show? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll Just catching up because the two of us haven't right. talked Catch in a while. Catch up it is. Catch up it is. All right. So we already gave all the uh, social handles and everything. How do we close out the show? Listen to us. Give us some feedback. Yeah. Go to iTunes. Give us a review. We don't ask for that, which we and we should because it does impact... Uh, where you come up in the search results, but uh, you know if you haven't done it yet, that would be uh, fantastic. Open that iTunes app, or if you're in Google Play, open up Google Play. Uh, still, still on both, and uh, fill out a review. It helps out. Yep. So till next week, no topic. Two weeks from now. Yeah, we do right. not have a topic. So if you got a topic idea too, you can still hit us up. We've got a list of them, but for some reason none of them are poking out at us. Oh, actually, it'll be three weeks. Oh, why? Is this an extra week? There is an extra week this month. Oh, so, man, three weeks. November the 7th. Let's try to do a mini so Can we go three weeks without recording? Considering we're both maxed out at work right now? Probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. Fair point, fair point. Let's not promise something we can't deliver. Well, and actually, the next one will be the... I will be back... So I'm I'm going to be taking that test on Monday and Tuesday that week, and then we'll do the podcast on Tuesday. Oh, wow. So, so you'll, you'll, you'll be able to... We'll know whether I was smart enough to pass the test. <laughs> oh, oh, no, you can officially make product. That's right. Uh, so. All right. Well, we'll see you in uh, three weeks then. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.